idiot, stupid. Welcome back. That's anger caught on tape. Today we're talking about out-of-control rage and the anger underneath it. Devin, let's go back in time. And I want to talk about when your parents were getting divorced, when you were growing up. Did your folks yell and scream at each other? I mean, they were arguing back and forth. You know, I'm, I'm a kid. I didn't know what to do. So what did you do when your parents would start yelling at each other? I would just go in my room and be in my, be in my little hole alone. I also understand that there was a lot of anger and yelling when it came to you getting dropped off after your parents got divorced, when they were driving you from one house to the other. Can you describe those situations? Uh, it was more so I'd be with mom and, you know, she'd be on the phone with dad and as soon as she'd hang up that mf -er, and while with dad, he'd be, you know, as soon as he'd get off the phone with her or not in her presence, it was that or stupid B or... So on the Mel Robbins show, you hear me use the word trigger a lot. And a trigger is just a word that basically means that we all have like a, a mental switch. It's almost like a light switch in your body that can get flipped. And you're not the one that flips it. Life flips it. And so something as dumb as someone not using their blinker flips this mental switch for you. That's how a trigger works. It's something that gets installed in you at a very young age. And we don't realize it when we're little that you have these triggers. And for you, the trigger is clearly yelling. The trigger is something from your past. And now you're stuck in this pattern where life is flipping this switch and you don't have control over it. And now you're expressing anger. You know, the anger is an issue, rage is an issue, but that's just an expression of something deeper that's getting triggered. And so I want to show you what I'm talking about. Why don't you both come with me? This is, we're going to come over here. And uh, this is what I call the word wheel. And the reason why I love this thing is because it helps us talk about things at a deeper level. So when your parents were either yelling and fighting and you're off in your room and you're hiding, when you come out from anger, what's a deeper emotion that you were feeling when your parents were fighting? Sadness. Okay, now when you're in your car and somebody cuts you off, you clearly feel anger. Mm -hmm. What else do you feel? Disgust. Okay, disgust. Now let's look toward here. Frustrated. Frustrated. Aggravated. Aggravated. Hate. Hate. Did you feel those things when you were angry with your parents? Frustrated, yeah. aggravated, hate? That's what was making you punch a hole in the wall? Yeah, just a lot of aggravation. So what I want to do, though, is I want you to get in touch with the impact. So when you're driving with him, and he was doing what he was doing, what's the word that comes to mind? Probably fear. Okay, so let's come out as you're driving and he's raging and you're feeling fear. These are the words that sort of relate to that. Let's come out and let's see what word jumps out at you as the deeper emotion. Um, insecure. Insecure. Let's go a little bit deeper. When you're with him and he is doing this rage, what else do you feel at um, a deeper level? Helpless. How does that hit you to know that the people that you love feel helpless around you. That's a, that's a tough word. That's a, it's an impactful word to know that you felt would feel helpless. Did you feel that way around your parents? Most definitely, it was nothing I could do, you know. And see, here's what's interesting is that the reason why it's so important to hit these deeper emotions, because this is the trigger. You're not getting triggered because you're angry. You're getting triggered because you feel helpless, you feel frustrated, you feel aggravated. These are your triggers. When you feel that way, you express anger because that's what you saw when you were a kid. And you are now, as an adult, expressing what you saw at the same moment you feel these deeper emotions. 
The only way that you're going to break this pattern is to understand the impact that it has on the people that you love. They feel helpless. They feel scared. That's not what you want. Mm -mm. And to start expressing yourself at this deeper level instead of expressing the anger. And I want you to get control of this before you literally get killed confronting somebody. I'm terrified about that, honestly. And that's what we're gonna talk about, what steps he can take to get this under control when we come back. Today we're talking about uh, out of control rage and the anchor that's underneath it. And Devin just revealed that his rage is triggered by the feelings that he had about his parents' divorce. What did you learn based on what we did with the word wheel? Um, I learned that I'm affecting other people and my- Tell her. I learned that I'm affecting, you know, while this stuff was going on, I learned like, you know, it's bothering you, it's hurting you, it's affecting you. So I want you to stop talking about anger and rage. And I want you to start to identify the times that you're feeling the deeper emotion. I need you to go and write down all of the moments that trigger you in your life, okay? It's important to do it ahead of time so that you can see it coming. Okay. That's number one. Number two. When you feel the cauldron start to boil, you're going to use my five second rule to calm your ass down. Five, four, three, two, one. You're gonna count backwards. Why will that work? I'm gonna tell you why it's gonna work. By simply counting backwards, you're making a decision to not let your emotions take over. And then you're gonna say to yourself, I'm just feeling aggravated. I can cool down. That's it. What do you think? I'm excited. I'm really excited. Are you gonna do it? Yes, ma'am. And what do you think? I'm really excited for you too. I'm happy for you. Thank you. I'm glad that you're making choices to better yourself. Are you trying to heal yourself and become better? Just wanna be, I just wanna be a, a better human being. Yeah. We all do. You're a really great guy. We all do. You're a good guy. You're a good person. And it takes, it takes a strong, uh, generous woman to show up for your ex-boyfriend. Yeah. And, and have his back. And I uh, would love to hear an update from you two because I have a feeling this is opening some doors that got closed. We'll be right back. Yeah.